What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, I am still defying the laws of arcades. I present to you the ultimate party cade. That my friends is of rock. This is good. <laughs> I just want to make a quick note. I mean, look at this. I mean, this is like, I mean, I just want to make a quick note, okay? If you're going to inquire about this happening, either you call me, you send me an email. If you do not pronounce it as the house of rock, don't ask me. Don't even call me about it. You must pronounce it like that. <laughs> I say it in all my videos. If you are not following me on Instagram, what are you waiting for? You should be following me at Vic underscore VP. If you were following me, you would have seen the entire process of this specific build, mainly focusing on the sound system on this. I kept making a joke. Um, basically, I, was, I, was, I, I, I talked about this cabinet. Uh, I'll give you a whole backstory on it, but basically the joke was that somebody thought I was gonna put a Logitech Z313, like my other cabinets, the regular basic RK cabinets, and I just kept running with this joke where I was like, you thought I was going to put a Logitech in this? That, my friends, is not a Logitech at all. That is 1,450 watts of pure power. Insanity on this build. Let me put the camera down. You don't like selfie mode, but let's talk a lot about this cabinet. I got a lot to talk about on this one. All right, guys, we're going to go, obviously, full in-depth. Might be a long one, but it's going to be a great one. I do talk a lot, but I just can't get enough of all the builds that I'm doing and I love every second of it and I like to just explain and explain and explain and all that. Not to mention a lot of people do shoot me emails and questions and that's part of a good thing about talking a lot because most of the times I answer the questions without you even asking it. So, awesome. We're gonna go full in depth. We're gonna be talking about the system itself, all the add-ons, all the goodies that you see here. I'll give you like a little bit of backstory on how it all started and how I created the design of it. It's, there's, there's gonna be a lot to go over, but let's talk basics. Let's start with the main thing, which is what is this and the system. You are looking at a 55 inch by Vic. Taking what my wife and Eric and other people suggested. I'm taking my personal by Vic design and branching off from your standard arcade joysticks to dedicated setups. This is a totally different cut system compared to my joysticks four player setup, which I'll probably wheel over here and compare it in the middle of the video. But yes, this is a 55 inch by Vic cabinet, fully dedicated to light guns, guitar hero, DJ hero, karaoke, and dance dance revolution. You're not gonna find Street Fighter on this. There's obviously no joysticks, no buttons besides your admin buttons. This right here is mainly for party cage stuff. Obviously, it is running hyper spin. I'll go in depth. Vic, there's PS3 on the screen. That's honestly for um, Time Crisis Raising Storm for the light gun stuff. But again, this cabinet is designed and meant for an ultimate party setup, an ultimate party cave. Basically, everybody in the room could enjoy this cabinet. You don't have to be actually on the decks or on the guitars to kind of sing along, dance along, and just have party energy and party vibes on it. Again, you could get that with your RK cabinets, all that, but this is just, this is party cave. You're not gonna find Street Fighter, you're not gonna find like Mario on this. This is party cave stuff. So yes, this is running Hyperspin. This is actually running my personal Hyperspin shooter drive. As you saw in the 43 inch dedicated Rambo cabinet. Uh, it essentially started as the shooter drive. And I said to myself, you know what? Why not, like, you know, add to it? I added Guitar Hero, DJ Hero, Dance Dance Revolution, um, and obviously just a little stuff like YouTube Karaoke to it. And that's honestly how this came about. That's why you do see in the main screen, you saw like Super Nintendo, you saw PS3. Those are really for the actual shooting games. You know, Super Nintendo, it had like the Super Scope game. It had shooting games in it. That's why it was in that wheel. So you have a main gun game wheel, we have a main rock band wheel, I got a main guitar hero, main dance dance revolution, main DJ hero, I'll go and I'll bring you in closer and all that. And then I have one main which is called Let's Rock. 
that has all the dancing and the guitar hero dj hero rock band stuff in one so again as far as like the, if you take that wheel even the, the guitar hero stuff if i go into the wii wheel i do have wii shooting games and i have the wii guitar hero and dj hero honestly uh from my experimenting and research the dolphin emulation for guitar hero rock band and dj hero is by far the best emulated stuff ps2 is i got one or two guitar heroes on ps2 because it's not on the wii um but in all honesty i do like the wii emulation on it that leads me now to the actual guitars i use the guitars are actual wii guitars uh and shout out to rafnet it is a company that you could get it's a usb to the wii mote connection and i do have them on this cabinet that's how the guitars are connected and that's also how DJ Hero is connected. These are real Wii controllers. We're real, real, real Wii controllers. Um, I was looking on Amazon, they do have a guitar that had really like, uh, I think it had 10 buttons. It was five up here and then five down here. I was gonna get those. There is a competitor overseas that was using those. I don't know his research on it, but my specific my my cabinet as far as when i was looking for parts i got the wii's the wii guitars cheap i went with the wii guitars so now honestly the computer that is in this is a very old computer it's actually my test bench computer um probably after i make a couple of sales of this i'll probably invest and swap out the computer on this but i am running a dell optiplex on this 16 gigs of ram with a 1050 ti and it plays fairly well. Again, I'll be brutal honest, this is my personal cabinet. This is something where I got an idea, usually when it's the first ever made, you know, prototype, I always keep it. So this is my personal one, and I honestly, I have the Dell, I swap it in and out uh, on my workbench to this cabinet, whatever I'm playing in this cabinet. So now obviously for customers, the, the computer won't have a 1050 Ti, that is old technology. It will obviously be, you know, better tech. I just had this computer on my test bench. It's actually the, the computer I use to download my games. Uh, and hey, if it catches the virus, I don't care about it. I just wipe the hard drive kind of PC. It's just one of those PCs that are just sitting in the corner. Um, so basically I do take it out. I have the computer inside of the cabinet right now. I take it out, I put it on my desk. When it's time to use this cabinet, I just basically bring it back and forth. It is not convenient. It's just for me personally right now, I don't really want to invest, you know, over $700 for a computer for this specific cabinet because in my instance, this cabinet will be used for parties. Um, you know, it's not like I have to come down every day and play Guitar Hero, this is really gonna be for parties. It'll be at my, in my, my Battle Station game room and when it's party time, if I know family is coming over, I'm just gonna take the computer and put it here. Uh, that's just my personal setup. I will have customers that, I even have one right now, he is hardcore into Dance Dance Revolution. He actually wants me to take the Dance Dance Revolution cabinet design and make him a DDR cab. This was talks before I finished this and I sent him a picture of it and he's like, whoa, this looks way better. And I was like, honestly it is because it's a 55 inch screen. Um, you know, me and my family went uh, to the arcade about two weeks ago and we saw like the newer uh, Step Mania Dance Dance Revolutions and they ain't 32 inches. Those cabinets now are hitting the 43 and up. Again, this right here is a 55 inch TV on this and it's an eye catcher. So again, the original idea I had was just Guitar Hero. I was like, oh, you know, Guitar Hero, that's awesome. Shout out to my buddy Eric, because he told me about Clone Hero. Um, you know, just looking at it, I was like, oh man, Clone Hero, you could use the guitars. And then I looked into Guitar Hero, I'm like, all right, this is cool. And I did mention this little story I'm saying right now in my past video, which I was originally gonna take the Guitar Hero arcade cabinet design. I was gonna use that. And talking to the wife and everything, my wife was like, Vic, you're Vic, like you're a Vic VP, you can't. Sure enough, that was with the whole, go back to my buy Vic story and, and you'll see that. But basically I said, you know what? I do want bigger screens, everybody wants big screens now. And now you do have a Bivik dedicated either Partycade or the dedicated shooter. I mentioned in the Rambo cabinet, uh, the Rambo video, what this cabinet would look like if it was the shooter one. But 
The cabinet right now is a total redesign of the four player, really the control panel area here and the speaker panel here. Um, you know, on my cabinets, it's a, it's a perfect 90 degree with a two to three inch step up. You don't need that. I don't need, uh, you know, joysticks to be hidden and I don't need the gap to hold the joystick and the buttons and all that. Everything is in the cabinet. I really love that it's just a clean, clean cabinet. It's just clean. The big thing also when it came to the speaker panel, I did have it a little bit angled. I'm gonna bring my four player and uh, we'll compare it uh, when I shut down. Um, but yes, you'll see it compared to the four player by Vic. So again, it started out with just being Guitar Hero and again, it was supposed to be the actual Guitar Hero arcade replica. And doing research, it went from, oh wow, I could actually play the Wii guitars to, okay, I have this Raphnet with the Wiimo connection. Can I play DJ Hero? Doing the research on that, DJ Hero worked. Then I was like, you know what? It's all USB devices. What else can we do? Let's add the dedicated shooter. You know, might as well have the light guns to it. And honestly, I finished the cabinet and I had about two or three people hit me up and was like, Vic, like, what about Dance Dance Revolution? I was like, oh, here we go. I gotta add it now. And then I did go and I got the two Dance Dance Revolution USB pads. Like, it, 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 every, all the controllers connect in the front of the cabinet. Like, that's it. You do have the admin buttons up above. That's really for hyperspin. And honestly, the coin in the start is for the shooting, the light gun games that need coin and start. But everything else, like Guitar Hero and Rock Band, and you don't, you don't need the admin buttons besides exiting and entering and starting after hyperspin. But essentially, all the controllers are going right here to the two USB ports in the front. So another unique thing that you haven't seen on any of my cabinets, this does have addressable LEDs on it. Um, as you can see with the whole rainbow effect going on, you could connect these to your phone so you can have the controller. Um, honestly, I found a great deal on them. Again, they are addressable LEDs. Um, you could do a bunch of effects and a different modes and it's cool. Basically, it's, it's, it's different than your static regular RGBs that I've been doing on my cabinets. This obviously is an add-on. It's probably gonna be about another 20 to $30 extra. The only difficult thing when it comes to addressable LEDs is the admin buttons. I can't connect those um, how I normally do on my arcade cabinets, such as Rambo was red, so every time the red channel and it would fade, you can't do that with addressable LEDs. The admin buttons basically stay on, they're static on. But what's pretty cool with this right here, again, you have your addressable modes. It's got rainbow effects and all that, but it does also have sound active mode. So anytime you talk or anytime the beat is going off, you do have sound active. And it's actually got like three different like separate modes. I'm right now not talking loud enough. I'm tapping the cabinet and you can kind of see it. Addressable LEDs, again, the wiring to them is way different than your standard stuff. There is a start point and an end point. And basically your start point, the LED strip is telling the controller, hey, I am LED one. And then when it goes as far as the addressables and you know the modes like the chase modes, it's the computer's basically saying, hey, one, two, three, four, five, do your research on addressable LEDs, you'll understand what I'm saying. But basically when it comes to wiring this, it is way different than my standard regular RGB stuff. If you look carefully at the cabinet, dead in the middle, is LED one and it branches out. It's actually going out, out, and then up. That's how RGB works. You kind of see how it is. Let me see if I can get a good mode to kind of explain it, give you like layman's terms. That's kind of the best way to do it. You can see that it's white, red, and it goes out. Even on the deck here, I have it starting here and then out right here. So basically, I have one hub, there's one kind of um, a ground uh, block, and wires branch out. So I technically have four strips that start with LED one. So for example, there's one strip, there's another strip here, there's two strips here, and two strips there. You can't wire, it's a very specific wiring is what I'm trying to say, so it's not a, our job, it, it takes maybe about a day or two just to wire it. Um, you could essentially do one start for the control panel, for example. I could start on this corner here, but it would end here. So that means it's gonna start, and then the chase effect is gonna end there. So as you can see, 
this has a nice effect. I basically copied and duplicated the control panel to the actual cabinet. Again, I'm, I'm talking a lot, but address what LEDs on this one was a new experience for me. They are awesome, they are cool. It, it's way more um, detailed and significant than my regular RGB static uh, LED strips. Now real quick, I do want to talk about the sound system on this. The sound system, I mean, if I'm going to do a party cabinet, there's no way like a 20 watt sound system is going to work. It's, it's, it, there's no way. The first thing I really did research on was the sound. You got two. These are Rockville speakers. These are actually meant for boats. This is like a marine grade speaker. This is 350 watts and 350 watts. You have 700 watts just in monitor speakers alone. Then you got the 12 inch subwoofer, which again, when I was designing this cabinet, I've seen the competitors and I was like, you gotta have bass, especially with like DJ Hero, you gotta have bass. So I went with a 12 inch subwoofer on this, rated at 750 watts. So 700 watts and 750, you're looking at 1450 watts. To drive that, I had to get a very awesome specific amp that you could control the subwoofer, basically the bass and the frequency, and the monitors, the basic bass and treble. I'm telling you right now, this thing is loud. It is, I can't even go past like, like 10%. If I'm at 12 o'clock, I can't go past three o'clock without like it being loud. So uh, let me just see. I'm gonna just probably wait. Yeah, let me wait. Let me see if I, I don't wanna get copyrighted on this because it's gonna be a long video. So let's just see, that's DJ Hero 2. Let me go to the other one real quick. Yeah, so I'm gonna, right now, like I'm at zero. No joke, that's a little bit. Like, if I was at 12, I'm at one o'clock. That's like four o'clock. That's half. <laughs> That is, it's, I'm telling you, it is, it is, it's loud. But in all honesty, for the, the price I paid for the amp, I'm like surprised, I'm shocked as hell, I, I can't believe it. Uh, again, I had this, I was playing with the kiddo, so I had the bass low. I'll pump up the bass a little bit, just so you can see it. And I will put, um, I'll put this, the LEDs to sound active. difficult to get a video and the audio to it because I don't want to get copyrighted and all that. I hope I don't get copyrighted. But if you see it on Instagram, you would see how loud this thing is. The other thing also when I was doing the research for the speakers was, hey, what a convenient and nice way to do it. These are LED sound active grills on it. So as the music's playing, you can see the red. The, for this speaker specifically, you could either do red or blue. I have them both set differently so you could physically and you can just see that it's red or blue. It doesn't have green in it, but it is sound active LEDs here. And the subwoofer too is sound active. It, the sound active on the subwoofer, it looks just like that. So I have it just set to bounce. But again, the sound system on this is insane. Now also keep in mind, if you do know like sound, you know subwoofers, the actual enclosures in them are like, they're empty. Cause I guess more, it's more air and it vibrates more. The inside of this cabinet is empty. Besides like the computer, it is a pretty wide open cabinet. So there is a lot of air going into that subwoofer and it's, it's basically a oversized subwoofer as far as the, the base on this, it's, it's ridiculous. So now let's talk artwork on this. Again, I'm gonna give like a pat on my back on this one because I love the design that I created. Yes, I'm taking proud ownership of this. I thought to myself, okay, Guitar Hero, when I was originally gonna make this cabinet again, it was just gonna be a Guitar Hero cabinet. I was like, you know, 
what can I do? Then I thought about like the light gun add on and I was like, oh, you know what? Growing up, The House of the Dead was a great iconic series. I was like, let's still play on words. You got, you know, rock band and you got like rock music with guitar here. I was like, you know what? We're gonna call it The House of Rock. So as you can see, the collaboration of The House of the Dead and Guitar Hero, basically I took the Guitar Hero font, which is very openly, you know, you could download it. Uh, and then you make your own letters and all that. So instead of hero, I put rock to it. So again, you are looking at the house of rock. Our work is just, it's great. You're looking at right now the background. So that reddish background is actually House of Dead remake background. And then at the bottom of it, you have two zombies and the guitar hero lady girl. Um, what's really cool with this, right? It's, if you look kind of carefully, um, let's talk about the House of the Dead logo. Okay, I, I, I chose obviously the original House of the Dead. So you're looking at the House of the Dead 1 logo. The House of the Dead 4, or, no, it, yeah, it's the House of the Dead 4. The House of the Dead 4, the logo actually almost looks like, or I should say it's very similar in design to the Guitar Hero logo. I was gonna use that. And then I made the artwork and I was like, you know what? I don't like it. I, I didn't like it. I had to keep it original. So I kept it with the original, the house of the dead, kind of red and black, the tall H. I kept that. I, I was like, you know, I'm, I, it was either be uniform and look like the Guitar Hero logo or bring it back to its roots and bring it back to the original house of the dead. So that's as far as the logo side of it. If you look very carefully now at the zombies, right? You got the middle zombie, I believe that's House of the Dead 3. Uh, that's actually the box art from House of the Dead 3. But, from my research, the one that is on your left, there is an actual, there's an actual zombie with the guitar. Um, when I was doing research, it turns out that in House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn, which me personally, I have it, I never fully played through it, apparently, you meet that zombie. You meet a guitar playing zombie, so I was like, oh, this is just perfect. You got the House of Dead and you got guitar here. You got a zombie that has a guitar and he's got the hat. He's got the bucket hat. You know who he looks like. So it, I, I just think it's a perfect collaboration on that. So when it came to the actual control panel, speaker panel, all that, I did a play on words. Obviously I said this slant right here is known for me and my customers. This is my marquee. This is the marquee. My marquee is not up top like classic cabinets. This is my marquee. Stay tuned for Project Canada because he's got something that is mind-boggling as far as his uh, marquee. So stay tuned for some amazingness on his cabinet. But again, this right here is considered my marquee. Obviously, you got the House of Rock logo on the marquee. TVs, as you can see right underneath it, I do have a little bit of space to put some wording or I don't. You could technically drop the TV down more, but if you look very carefully, this is a Guitar Hero quote, kind of like the loading screen. It says, turn it up, my ears are barely even bleeding. Again, basically I took the Guitar Hero font and went with it. On the speaker panel, you got your classic crank it to 11. Uh, again, if you know amps, they don't really go to 11, they go to 10, but that's a Guitar Hero quote right there. And also on the control panel here, it says, if the police aren't complaining, you're not playing loud enough. Again, same thing, Guitar Hero font and on the deck. Awesome. If I take out the DJ controller, this is the real reason why I have the control panel this big. Number one, again, I knew I was gonna put DJ Hero, so I needed a tabletop for the DJ controller. And number two, you do have the light guns on the side, which are perfect. They're perfectly placed right on the side. They are exposed, so you can see it on the side of the cabinet. But again, you need a deck. If you don't do DJ Hero, this would be cut right up to the T molding and then I would have the guns inside the cabinet here. They won't be exposed like they are now. It's basically just a very seamless, smooth control panel. Even when it came to the artwork, I was actually kind of, I, I not but like for a good day, I was contemplating, I was like, do I want to put T molding here? And I did route it for T molding, but I did say to myself when I apply the graphic to it, which is, it's not easy, it's pretty difficult for this one specifically because it's one solid graphic. I basically applied it, I took one nice clean cut, and I said, nope, this control panel has to stay just like this. It looks almost seamless. Yes, 
You do see a line here, it's like a shadow line, but this is way better than if I did a black T-molding here. I just love how this came out, this is awesome. And again, basically the control panel, this whole piece of wood, it does, I don't wanna be in the way of the camera, but this lifts up, and that's it. Again, you do have basically your wires and all that, and it'll drop down like so. There you go. And as far as kick plate, obviously, it, when you do artwork, you have to really think of everything. I knew the 12 inch subwoofer was gonna be right in the middle, so it does eat up a lot of real estate, but you still have some area for art. So you got the other Guitar Hero guy here, you got Slash here, and you got the Scarlet Dawn zombie there. USB right top center here. Um, awesome, like I said, all the controllers and all that goes right into this USB here. So the only thing about like stuff like this, as, like I said, there's a lot of USB connections. That leads to a lot of wires. That is just a given. Unless I went with the Bluetooth connectivity for the light guns, you're still gonna have wires because I do have the RAFNETs. There's two RAFNET USB wires and you got the two wires for Dance Dance Revolution pads. You will see wires. I did post pictures of this cabinet. I did post a picture of the Dance Dance Revolution pads, which I will break out in this video. You're gonna see wires. There's, there's no way around it unless you get a dedicated platform for the Dance Dance Revolution. You're gonna see wires no matter what. Again, keep in mind when you are doing like the Guitar Hero stuff, you're gonna have a wire going to the cabinet. These are not wireless. I don't know if they make wireless ones. From my research, shout out to Eric, he did tell me that the wireless Xbox guitars, you will experience lag or latency, and you're basically missing notes. So keep that in mind, please. You're gonna see USB wires. You're gonna see wires. There's no way to avoid it, especially if you want some clean gameplay without like any like mishaps, you're gonna need wired because wired is better than wireless on the situation. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because as you can see, like, you know, my light guns are here. I already know people are like, Vic, bro, aim tracks? I'm gonna tell you something. This right here, these aim tracks are the same as that aim tracks from my personal Buy Vic 4 player. So, these are like multi-purpose. I could use it on that cabinet. I could use it on this cabinet. I don't have to recalibrate because the user, the number on it, like the ID, it matched. I literally took the guns from my, my four player and I plugged it in. I ran the Ultimark software and it already knew like, hey, this is ID one. And it's just seamless, it's easy. So yes, this has aim tracks on it, it is multi-purpose. So if I have family over, we could be playing Blitz on the four player cabinet and somebody else could be playing light gun games on this cabinet because it's a dedicated shooter, Guitar Hero party game. So. There you go, yes, there are aim tracks on this. I told you why I had aim tracks. But basically what I'm leaning towards is that, you know, to keep it nice and uniform, especially for like promo videos and pictures, I'm using the guitar kind of holder to keep the USB wire neat. Same thing as you can see on player two. I have it kind of tucked away. Nice and neat, not too bad. What's also great, like as far as measurement wise, as you can see, the Guitar Hero, um, this is regular Amazon holder stuff, very easy stuff but it's perfect. I'm right up against the control panel. Just like, you know, the strap, you could probably hook it or tie it in a certain way so it doesn't like touch the floor. But that guitar right there is essentially floating. It's not touching the floor. All right, so let's talk about Guitar Hero and Rock Band on this. So again, the big thing is that I do have Wii guitars. I'm gonna talk real quick about the car guitars. Guitars are expensive. Uh, if you are, if you are even thinking about like, pricing and all that on this. Uh, just keep in mind, honestly, the price of guitars alone, they are up there. I got lucky, the reason I have these is because I went on Marketplace and uh, I got lucky and I found both of these for 10 bucks. Yes, they're not like the prettiest. I had to kind of clean them with like alcohol and all that, but it gets the job done. Now, if you look on like, um, I just want to put this in. If you are looking at like, let's say eBay, I've seen guitars go for like $100 per guitar. Um, the other big thing right now, because again, I have my Project Canada, we just discovered that the RAFNET, R-A-P-H-N-E-T, the RAFNET cable, as you can see again, this is a USB cable going right into the Wii guitar. 
The rap nets right now are currently sold out. Um, and it says that it will probably be restocked in September. So keep that in mind right now. It's a little bit difficult to get the rap nets, but uh, honestly, this is the only guitar I had in my hands. This is the only guitar that I personally have tested. And it works, as you can see, even the whammy bar works when I hit it, awesome, it is awesome. Again, hardwire connected. I'm also running Guitar Hero Metallica right now, which if you do try it, really, it does tell you that you do need the, oh shit, I hit the wrong one. It does tell you, damn it, I hit the wrong one again. It does tell you that you do need a USB microphone connected, which now leads into the rock band stuff. I keep in mind I have all the rocks. So I have not fully sat down and tested all the rock band stuff, but I tested a handful and they worked. The only thing that didn't work for me, as you can see the whammy bar, the only thing that didn't work for me was rock band one. Rock band one kept giving me the nag screen, which is, hey, you need a USB microphone connected. I feel bad because there's a lot of people that do ask like, hey, can you like play Guitar Hero Rock Band, like with the volume up. For this specific video, I won't be because again, you get hit with copyright and such. But as you can see right now, I am gonna be running uh, Rock Band Green Day. And again, using the Guitar Hero controller, it works. It's it's pretty cool. I do have some people already asking me like, hey Vic, can you do like the drums and all that? There is like options for that. Um, gotta press the plus button to continue. There is options for that. Um, I haven't personally tried it, but there are options for it. Um, just keep in mind, the only thing, and this is like where it gets technical as far as like emulation, I'm running three, no, four. Three? Three or four different versions of Dolphin, which is the Wii emulator. Because I do have Dolphin Guitar Hero, I have Dolphin DJ Hero, I have Dolphin DDR, and I have Dolphin Shooter. So there is quite a lot of technical stuff when it comes to emulation. Now the only big thing, and this is something where like I sat down and I really wanted to nail it, is every time you're plugging in a new USB device, depending on like the emulator and how you have it set up, it might be confused, which is honestly why I have five different versions of Dolphin. So again, not to mention like, Dolphin, for example, uh, if you set the Wiimote one to like guitar, you have to change it for DJ here to be DJ. So that's why I have separate emulators for each specific one. I'm basically giving you some inside secrets so my competitors could uh, copy that and go ahead and be my guest. Um, but yes, essentially, as you can see, I'm gonna just kind of bump it. Again, I don't wanna get any copyright, but at, even with the 1050 Ti, it's it's playing and honestly um i was even playing some lego rock band and easy mode uses four fingers like to me that's like medium or hard mode but it's cool it's awesome guitar hero awesome stuff now what's great with is i could basically take my raft net and then pop it into the dj hero it right now basically recognized that it kind of disconnected and it paused but let's load up some dj hero so now I got DJ Hero controller connected, again, using the RafNet, and I'm able to skip and I'm using the DJ controller. I do wanna make a quick statement about the DJ controller. Um, DJ Hero works. The only thing that is a little bit iffy, and again, I don't know if it's my specific controller, because obviously these are secondhand. I bought the DJ controller off of eBay. I think I spent like 30 bucks. Uh, you might find it cheaper, it might be more expensive, but, the only thing I do see is the scratching. Again, it is emulation, so the scratching might not be like beautiful and perfect, but it works. It works, you might get like the kind of break when you do like the scratching, but um, it works. And as you can see, I'm like navigating. Um, I keep forgetting to like save the tutorial, um, but yes, you could basically just continue and play. Um, you could swap the deck from left to the right side. It does unclip and reclip. It both works either way. There's basically three buttons. You have like the, the knob and the crossfader 
and it's cool, it's awesome. The only thing that kind of sucks about this specific game is that you've got to do the tutorial to even like start playing the game, which is kind of annoying as hell. Um, it's there, it's fine. But as you can see, emulation's great, the guy's gonna talk. Okay, Professor Flash is in the building. He's gonna talk, you can skip it. Like I said, the only thing that I personally noticed is the scratching. Uh, I'll be honest though, when I was first playing with this, the scratching worked. There is a way to set like your dead zone inside of Dolphin. Um, I think honestly though, my lens or whatever it is, I might have to open up my personal controller just to clean it. Um, I noticed that my scratching connects. If I kind of hold, if I give pressure to the center of the controller, the scratching is flawless, it's beautiful. But if I only do the green button and scratch, which is an option, it's 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 a hit or miss. You really gotta like go with it. Uh, you really gotta push down and go with it. I do notice that if I, you can even see it on the screen. If I like give pressure to the middle of the, like you can see that, see the wave? I hope you can see it. Um, but yes, that's the only one thing. I don't know if it's the controller, which I believe it is because when I'm in Dolphin and I spin it, it's like on and off, it'll get a, a hit. But um, I'm gonna definitely say it's the controller part. I think it's my personal controller that's doing that. But all in all, like the crossfade, you got the knob and the euphoria button. It's a pretty cool experience. It's, it's awesome. And there's DJ Hero. All right, so now we're gonna talk about Dance Dance Revolution. This is kind of cool. This is what it's like, I thought of it. Um, you know, again, I bought, I'm gonna talk about the pads. I already know people were like making fun of me about the pads, but what's pretty cool with the cabinet is that again, and uh, this goes out to, um, I forgot your name, you called me, you saw me on the highway, and you, I gave you a ring. Uh, he said, hey Vic, can you put your cabinets on casters? I'm like, yes, I'm already doing that. So the cabinet is on casters, and basically in the rear of the cabinet, I do have storage, basically just an open spot, and I basically have the Dance Dance Revolution pads in the rear of the cabinet. So I could basically use this as storage, I could wheel the cabinet back with the casters, and game on. All right, so that's pretty cool. I got one of these dance pads. I'm gonna move it over because I saw it on the camera, you don't really see it, but got the dance pad connected. It is wired again. You do see the wire there. I'm right now running, uh, this is Dance Dance, what is this? Uh, Disney Grooves. I guess it's Dance Dance Revolution Disney Grooves. This is probably the only Dance Dance Revolution and uh, Mario mix on the GameCube that I could actually like play and enjoy. Um, again, this right now is running the Wii emulator. Again, this is now a separate dolphin. The big thing about the Wii, that's why I'm showing it, you can kind of see the screen is spazzing out. This specific game and most of the Wii games, you do need the Wii mode, which again, I have it mapped out to the mouse. You did need the Wii mode to select, and then you can use the Dance Dance Revolution pad to actually dance with. So if I do like groove mode, I want to see if I can pick the song. Um, but as you can see, I am using my mouse. And you know, that's that's what it is. I'm definitely in the wrong mode. I'd rather just, that's like groove mode is like the story mode, I guess. I'd rather just do like a free play. I was playing this like, uh, you could see in the promo video, I was playing it with my baby girl. Uh, we were playing and it's definitely like, the first song is a good song because it's like left, left, up, up. It's a cool song. But I did also try, and you know, there's a bunch of songs here. So again, I still need my, my mouse. Once I get into the game, then I can step away from the mouse. Um, there's a couple of, there's like, like the PS2 version of Dance Dance Revolution is not for me. That is like, as you can see, I'm able to confirm, it, to those, like, even on easy mode, the first song, it just throws you to the wolves. But basically, I have it. Now, the big thing about the Wii, you're gonna see, I don't know if you can see it there, but the left and the right actually have a shake feature. So I had to go into Dolphin and kind of set up the shake with the left and the right, it's a whole thing. Um, so yes, just keep that in mind. I don't think I'm gonna hit with copyright on this because it's not a real song. Like I can do this. <laughs> this is this is fun. And as you see, I'm able to play. So now here's where people are like Vic, you you bought like this 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 BS kitty pad. Listen, this dance pad was 50 bucks on Amazon per pad. And for me because I don't play Dance Dance Revolution, this is enough for me and the family to enjoy. It doesn't like slip, like it doesn't like, you know, you can go hard on this and 
it's not crazy. Yes, granted, there is a company that sells like a $250 actual metal pad. You want that? Fine, add it on. I will buy it, I will put it to your build. But for me, I'm able to store it, it's not in the way. Those big like pads, what do you, you know, where are you gonna where are you gonna put it? Uh you know, do you. <laughs> do you bro? This right now, I am not a Dance Dance Revolution player. Luckily I found this and the Mario one, and I'm happy with those two, but all the other Dance Dance Revolutions I cannot play. I have I mean I guess all of them, but you got PS1, there's a Dreamcast, I got PS2, I got the Wii, and I have GameCube. The only thing I'm missing is Step Mania. Uh, from my understanding, Step Mania is almost like Clone Hero, but there's also a real Step Mania arcade. Um, that's probably the only stuff I am missing. Um, I could always download that. It's more of like, I have to go to the specific websites for that. That's more current gem Dance Dance Revolution. But for right now, I'm able to play it. You can see how Dolphin is. You can see the graphics on it. Upscale to 1080p. Again, this is a Wii game. It's it's a lot of fun. The only thing now that I'm noticing, and it's also with the Guitar Hero package, right? I have right now player one in. It's plugged in. If I want to bring player two in, I could connect. But if I connect that pad right now, that becomes player one. This then turns to player two. That is the only thing about the system. That is it. Even when it comes to Guitar Hero, if I have one RafNet plugged in, and mid-game you plug in the other one, my original one I had in my hand, which was player one, it just gets bumped to player two. Nothing crazy, it's nothing drastic. As you can see right now, I only have one controller in and I'm able to play, and I'm all good and easy to go. All right, next game up, we are gonna be doing a PlayStation 2 game. Uh, this is Dance Dance Revolution Extreme. Uh, and as you can see, again, mapped out, this is a PS2 game. It's mapped out. That's honestly like the big deal. Something about a PlayStation Eye, you don't need that, so you're gonna confirm. You got all that. This party mode is dumb, actually, I went into the wrong one. Um, so let's go to select, let's exit back. This is actually good for the video, so you can see that the gamepad works. But I played this, and like the first song, that's it, it throws you to the wolves, and it basically says, go. <laughs> but again, as you can see, Dance Dance Revolution Extreme. PS2 emulation. Uh, I basically sat and I I went through my uh, my ultimate console and I just looked up Dance Dance Revolution. As you can see, I can pick a song. Uh, I don't know the song, but whatever. Uh, it's just, I'm pretty sure you can see it on the camera. This goes crazy. And again, this is game, this right now is like regular game mode, song one. And like already, like, um, <laughs> I'm already uh, over the place. Uh, like I said, there is a lot. I'm missing it. <laughs> like that? What is going on there? I can't do it. Like I saw this and I was like, nope. Dance Dance Revolution is not for me. <laughs> I'll do one more Dance Dance Revolution video. This one, like I said, uh, somebody saw it on uh, Instagram. I was like, I didn't even know there was a version of this, but this is the GameCube. Only one Dance Dance Revolution game ever made for the GameCube, and that was Mario Mix. Probably the volume. I'm pretty sure I will get it. It's cool. And I can press start. Let's dance. Let's dance is right. We're gonna dance with my man Mario. Uh, it's cool. It works. Like I said, I've gotten so much flack already about like the you know the, the dance pad. And I said, listen, if you want to spend the 250 bucks per panel, order it. Uh, be my guest. <laughs> but as you can see, I'm able to enjoy it. It's 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 a cool feature. Uh, it's just again. A lot of programming, especially if you want it to be flawless, bouncing around with hyperspin. There is a lot that goes into programming. Again, uh, same thing with um, uh, GameCube didn't have any light guns, so there is no light guns. But again, like I was saying, the Wii, I have five Dolphin emulators for the Wii. Uh, PS2, I have two of them. One is Dance Dance Revolution and one is... Um, Actually, no, I have three of them because on the PS2, there's actually two Guitar Hero games that are very, um, what's the word? It, it was only on PS2. Um, so I actually have PS2 Guitar Hero, PS2 Shooter for like Time Crisis 2, and I have uh, 
Dance Dance Revolution. And it's awesome. It's cool. I won't be going into guns on this because I've done my videos in the past for the light guns. But again, it's the same concept. The only big thing is basically, if I'm going to play the light guns, don't have obviously the Guitar Hero connected or the Dance Dance Revolution. Have it empty. And your light guns. You got one player and you got two players. Aim tracks, I do have the light bar right up here. And what's also great, like I've been saying why I have it, I have two aim tracks. Each aim track came with a sensor bar for the TV. I have the sensor bar on the Bivik, the four player, and I have a sensor bar for the four play, uh, for the dedicated Guitar Hero cabinet. So I don't have to worry about swapping the bars and all that, it's, it's flawless. I literally have to just take the gun and go that way with it or go this way with it. It's Flawless, I'm talking, it's genius. I, I'm, I'm happy with it. Again, you've seen my light gun stuff. The newest one was like Time Crisis Raising Storm. That's basics. All right, so now real quick, we'll talk about the actual hyperspin setup itself. Like I said, in the beginning, I have the categories and then I have like the systems, which it needs to be there. Um, we'll go slow. You obviously got your gun games. Like I said, this originally was my light gun, gun game drive. So you do have your gun games. I do have now Let's Rock. This is all the dance party Kate stuff in one. So you have Rock Band, uh, uh, DJ Hero, Guitar Hero, and Dance Dance Revolution is in this wheel. Then I have it broken down into all Guitar Hero. So this right here is mostly Wii and alongside the two PS2 games that's in this wheel. I do have Rock Band, that's all the Wii Rock Band games because Rock Band was, this, there was no like, exclusive to PS2, so it's all the Wii Rock Band. Clone Hero is Clone Hero, that's, an, that's actually an executable file. Clone Hero is basically current songs that people will sit and make the music stuff for it. So Clone Hero is on this. You got DJ Hero, which only has two games. Again, DJ Hero 1 and 2, that's the Wii. Then you got Dance Dance Revolution, that is all DDR games. So GameCube, the Wii, the PS2, I even have like a Dreamcast DDR. It's all there, and essentially this will be added with Step Mania. YouTube karaoke I'm going to touch up on real quick. It's pretty simple as far as karaoke wise, but just want to go down the list. Then now you go into the actual systems. These right here, the categories I just mentioned are, what's the word I want to use? Um, I don't know, I don't know the word to use, but basically it's, it's a collection. Boom. This is a collection of all the gun games. This is a collection of all the party games, collection of all the Guitar Hero. But for you to get the collections, you do need the systems. So again, if I go into Wii, that's gonna have the shooting games and the Guitar Hero and DJ Hero. So it's just categories uh, just like that. So that's why you do see Super Nintendo. There is no Mario stuff on this, meaning, you know, classic A and B Mario. All right, so real quick, we'll talk about YouTube karaoke. I, I just threw it in, honestly, this was kind of starting with, um, you know, Partycade. I was like, I was looking into jukebox stuff. Uh, and then I said to myself, you know what? It's a computer. So, you know, everybody could do like Spotify and Pandora and it's a computer. So you might as well just launch like the program. So in all honesty, it's just, it, if you do press enter on this, it just launches YouTube. I found one specific channel that has like a lot of karaoke stuff on it. And obviously you're on YouTube now. In YouTube, you can literally look up your song and put the word karaoke in it and boom, you will find it. Yes, you do need the keyboard. Yes, you do need the mouse for it, but it's, it's fun. It's simple. I told my wife about this and she's like, oh, you got microphones? I could add microphones. It's just, if you do that, you're talking about a much more expensive amp. Now you're talking about microphones. If you want professional, like sure microphones, you, you're raising the price. I, again, this, me personally, it's, I'm not using this cabinet a lot, probably five times out of the year type of cabinet. Um, again, you could add actual microphones though. I actually bought a USB microphone and I wanted it to work with Rock Band on the Wii. I sat down for like two days trying to get this thing to connect and I couldn't get it to work. There are videos on YouTube of it, but I just couldn't get it to work. So in all honesty, yes, this now just basically turns into a computer um, that you watch the screen and you sing. But again, this is where I'm trying to explain that it is a party cave. When it comes to karaoke and if you ever go to the karaoke bars, like yes, one guy has a microphone, but everybody winds up singing and not to mention with a 55 inch screen, you could be anywhere in this room and you could see it. Uh, it's pretty cool. I just went into full screen mode. Yes, you do need the mouse and the keyboard, but 
it's easy. As you can see, counts down. Awesome. And again, it goes into it goes into the the, the speaker. The other thing also with this specific amp is that it does connect to your phone via Bluetooth. This is a big deal about this amp, which I personally love. The amp isn't expensive. I think it was like 30 to 35 bucks, which blew my mind, especially for it to be a 2.1 amp with Bluetooth connectivity. Like that price, I was amazed. It was on Amazon. I got it. I needed 2.1 because I do have two monitors and a subwoofer. The big thing I did want to control the base on the subwoofer. I, I wanted a knob for it and it does have that. What's really great about this amp is that once I turn on, the, once I flip the switch, right? If I already connected the, my phone to the Bluetooth, it automatically connects to my phone. But if I disconnect from the Bluetooth, it automatically goes to the auxiliary input. There's no switch needed. I don't have to flip a switch. That's just awesome. Like right now, because I want to hear always the computer, I don't have my phone connected to it. So every time I turn it on, it automatically goes right into the auxiliary port. If I had my phone connected, it, it like if I right now go on my phone, I have to do it real quick, but I don't want to get hit with copyright. You could probably hear it. But if I connect to the Bluetooth, I'm already paired. There it is. Easy, done, I'm already paired, right? I have the volume here, I could also use my phone, but I do have the volume on the app. My computer's still going, but if I disconnect, that's it. It went back to the computer, no switch. My hand was here for the volume, so catch it, so no copyright. But that's it. I love the amp on this. And aside from the speakers though, that's where like the money was at. Uh, you know, it is what it is. It's definitely not a Logitech speaker setup. <laughs> Again, as you can see, you're on YouTube, you get out of full screen mode, you want to look up like Pandora. I have the shortcuts up top. It's easy. There was a company that um, I was looking into it, but you have to be like a, if you gotta, you gotta pay for it. Um, it's actually something where it talks to Spotify. It actually acts like touch tunes where all your friends could download this app and like you could put your song in and I could put my song in and then you could upvote it. You just need a host. So I would be the host or the computer would be the host. And it's like upvote, downvote. It's cool. You have to pay for it though. Me personally, I won't ever use that. This works. You could even do like the radio app. This works for me. This is just, again, you got something so simple as in a web browser and I added it to Hyperspin. And same thing, if I exit out of the web browser, I'm back into Hyperspin. Woo! <laughs> All right, guys, so I just want to show you kind of like the difference between a Bivik four-player cabinet, as you can see here, versus like the dedicated shooter guitar hero cabinet. Again, it's also because it's the Bivik design, so you have like big TVs. I do have two 55-inch screens right next to me. This is just to show you the magnitude of the cabinet. But the big deal is it basically follows the same form. As you can see, I said, uh, marquee and marquee is here. When I did the design for this, you kind of see that this kind of angles differently a little bit by like a hair, but the main thing is the speaker panel. Where you are right now, you can't even see the speaker panel, but you could see the speaker panel here. Again, the control panel here, the four player panel, it is up, it, it, it's coming up two inches. And again, the speaker panel is a 90 degree versus I don't know what degree this is, but yes, as you can see, there it is side by side. I'll get out of the way, <laughs> but yes, this is the Bivik four player and the Bivik party gate. It's awesome. <laughs> They're big, they're huge. This is awkward. <laughs> so from that angle with these back to back, you can now understand and see what I'm talking about with the speaker panel versus speaker panel here. You can definitely see 90 degree or just straight angle versus a slight angle. And that slight angle does a lot. Uh, as you can see, basic stuff. You're looking at 70 inches of the wood. It probably hits about 72 once you get the casters on it. It's just, that they're awesome. It's awesome. Identical TVs on this, it's, it's identical. Minus, again, this is the Rev 8 by Vic. So the actual side panel is, you know, here. There's no cutout here, it's just a solid piece. But that right there is a side-by-side 
comparison. Awesome. Well, there you guys have it in its final resting place. Look at how that sets too, because I have a column right there. Boom, right there. That is just a thing of beauty. It's the, the basement, honestly, right now, it's, you might be looking at it you're like, oh, Vic, you hit your max. Mm, two more cabinets. <laughs> two more cabinets. Um, not gonna be done right now, because again, I do now have a wait list for arcade cabinets. Just a great feeling knowing that people are watching the videos and they want cabinets, so I'm grateful for that. Um, but uh, one cabinet, uh, I'm pretty sure I could sneak it in there. I am looking at a vertical build, so I will be doing maybe a Bivik vertical, or I might be doing the Pac-Man Galaga um, home edition one, the, uh, the one that I bought my cousin a while back. Um, I might be looking at something like that. And the last one, which is not right now, definitely not right now, because people are gonna hear this and be like, whoa. Um, I will be looking into a driving setup. Notice I didn't say cabinet. Uh, I have a lot of ideas for driving. Um, don't wanna do what other people have already done, but basically let's just say, mine won't be a cabinet. It will be a platform. Again, I haven't even done any research. I have, I shouldn't say research. Um, I've done research. Uh, I haven't started any configurations, hyper, I haven't done any of that. I'm just looking at the actual seat mover setup right now, but that's gonna be definitely like after New Year's. I'm not looking at anything close to that. Right now, again, like I said, I have everything I could possibly need. This now, honestly, has turned into a showroom, to be really honest. I have my Hyperspin four-player Ultimate Console by Vic. I do have a Raspberry Pi build and a Neo Geo. I have the modded Nintendo Switch inside the Konami. I got my V-Pin. I got my Mega Touch. And now I do have the dedicated Guitar Hero shooter cabinet and all that. So it's awesome. I am definitely, right now, I'm about to take a picture. <laughs> it's uh, it's looking good. It's looking great. I love everything about this room here. And then I got my battle station. So it's awesome. Welcome to my battle station gaming area. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's mostly it. It's awesome. Uh, just keep in mind again, uh, when it comes to cabinets, for example, and it is happening soon with Project Canada. What's here, DJ Hero, Guitar Hero, Dedicated Shooter, can also be added to this. Keep that in mind. On that note, there you guys have it. VigVP, Game Case Arcades. Woo, bye guys.